I'm getting the supper. Dad, are you awake? All right, Betty. I'll be down in a second. Dancing. Coming? Oh, I can't. I'm cooking. You didn't even come to the pictures last week with us when you said you would. Well, it's all right for you. You're finished for the day when you get home. Oh, it's no use asking Betty to come anywhere. Oh, I didn't tell you, Betty. Ever such a peculiar man. Evening, Mr. Madison. Hello, Eddie. Well, I'll be seeing you. Yes, bye. Come on, Mr. Bye. Cheer. Yeah, close that window, Betty. It's like an ice box in here. Sorry, Dad. I've got something special for you. Kidneys. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it looks good. Hope I've cooked them all right. Of course, down to a tear. You know, you'll soon be cooking as well as your mum did. How are you getting on at the new job, Bet? Oh, Mrs. Frost's a bit grumpy, you know. It's all right working in the house, but... Oh, Dad, look. <coughs> Why, what is it? Blood. That's what comes of working at a butcher's. Yeah, you can't get out blood stains like that. I was wondering, Dad, I... I really need a new dress. This one's all worn out. I saw ever such a pretty frock in the forum's window yesterday. Oh, how much was it? Fifty-five and nine. It's a lot of money, bet you know. But it mean me digging into my savings. Doesn't matter, Dad. You know, I'm not getting any younger, and if I don't get that fishing boat before I retire, we're sunk, Betty. Well, we must get the boat. Oh. It's awful the way the money goes. The shopping came to five and ten percent me tonight. You know, you didn't ought to have bought these kidneys. How much to pay for them? As a matter of fact, Dad, Mrs. Frost left them lying on the counter. Everything was put away in the fridge, so I thought I might as well take them. They'd have only gone bad. You mean you took these without Mrs. Frost knowing? Well, she'd have only snapped my head off. Anyway, Mr. and Mrs. Frost get all the meat they want. I don't see why you shouldn't have something nice for a change. Well, look here, Betty. Don't you start making excuses for something you've done wrong. That never got no one nowhere. Once you start that, it's the thin end of the wedge, see? And don't let me catch you out over anything like this again. Oh, is that clear, Betty? Tonight, so you want to wrap up? Oh, uh, what right, not? These women's an old bushy about, don't they? <laughs> Tell you what I thought I'd do tonight, Bert. Help Betty with the washing up and that. Now, you've got enough work of your own to do, Mabel. No, it's no trouble. We're only across the road after all. <gasps> Can't you tie a muffler on properly yet? Here, why don't you come with me and the kids? Enjoy yourself for a change, wouldn't you, Bert? Yeah, why not? No, it wouldn't be no enjoyment to me. <laughs> Here, Bert, have you seen this? Talk about a tiny bit of homework. <laughs> Camellia. The wonder of the age, the disappearing mermaid. How does she do it? I bet I could tell you. <laughs> oh, I know. Here, none of that, Dad. You give that to me. I could do with a basin full of over and a change. Now, we don't want any talk like that, Reg. And don't you go into that sideshow. Quite bad enough having Betty Grable on the pictures without no disappearing mermaids. Well, good night, like Bert. Don't go and work too hard and overstrain yourself. Ten half an hour. Oh, by the way, I've got a darn train on. Don't forget. Oh, OK. Good night. I'll uh, see you later, mate. Righto. Good night. Good night.
What's the idea, Mallinson? You're not paid to go to sleep on duty, you know. No, sir, it's not that, sir. I've just... Oh, don't try to excuse yourself. Get the note for the up mail. But listen, sir. Something's just happened outside the box. Hello. business anyway. It's between me and the police. Me and the police, that's all. If I'd had just one bundle of these notes, my Daisy needn't have gone sweating her guts out, Charlie. No. I mustn't go thinking like that. That fellow that done him in. I bet he's feeling pretty sick. I reckon I'll count it in a minute. No. No, better not muck about with it. It's plain as daylight what to do. Bring out the police. Lifetime I'd have to work, and then I wouldn't earn half what's there. Say I just had a few hundred of it. I could buy the boat. We could have a woman in to clean up. Bet they'd have time to enjoy herself. I'd have my own bank account. Sign checks. I'd like to give a present to old Mabel and Reg. No, no, Mabel, go on. You take it, I mean. What's a mere ten quid? There's old Fred. I'd better ask him what to do. I don't want no funny business with the police. It's enough to give you pneumonia turning out in this weather. Why, the stove's half out. Uh, you might keep it yeah, up, you know, mate. Nothing else to do here all night but sit on your behind. Well, that's all you have. Now, listen, Fred. Something happened last night. I got the flu. That's what happened. Uh, I felt poorly when I went home. The missus said, oh, Fred, you do look bad. She says she's frightened. I've got me bronchitis coming up. What did you say happened last night, Luke? Ooh, nothing much to write home about. And the governor, he, he cut up rough. I think I'll take a couple of aspirins later on. It don't do to take too many, you know. It gives you singing in your ears. I got my feet wet the other night. That's what done it. Well, so long, Fred. Oh, so long. I oh, shut the door. Must have been born in a field, that fella.
shirt, one on left. Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Single room. Uh, Miss Titmus. Miss Titmus, gentlemen for a singing. Morning, sir. You are early. We didn't expect anybody till the 8.20. Come by road. Uh, my car broke down. I had to walk in. I thought you looked cold. Now, let's see. We've got number 11. Gentlemen's going this morning. Well, you could have a double, if you like. That'll be 15 shillings overlooking the sea. A double? We have to charge full price, you see, but it's well worth it for the view. Just name, nationality, and where you come from. Number 14, Martin. Take the gentleman's luggage, will you? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I've nothing with me. I left it in the car. I shall fetch it later. Put a phone call through to Paris, Trinity 3482. My boy is ill, you know. Oh, dear. I'm ever so sorry I overslept. I haven't even put the kettle on. What have you got there, Dad? Well, can't you see? Where'd you get it? I'll find it. What's in it? It's none of our business what's in it. Is it locked? And do stop pestering me when I come out. Bad enough not even a cup of tea without asking nosy Parker in questions. You are not snappy this morning, Dad. I told you I overslept. All right, all right. I'll look after myself if you've got to get off. And you can't go out on an empty stomach. Oh, it's all right, Dad. Where'd you find the case? Well, in the street, if you must know. And as soon as I've had a bite of food, I've got to take it right to the police. I'll take it for you. I'll pass the police station. Can't you mind your own business? I'm fed up with you poking your nose into everything. There, now. Now I see what you've done. Sorry, Dad. I was only trying to help. Oh, it's all right, Betty. I'm sorry, honey. I'm not feeling quite myself today. Look here. Uh, I'll cut your sandwich, see? No, thank you. I'm not feeling hungry. It's for you. They're holding on now. Is that you, Beryl? Hello, Jim. Where are you speaking from? Well, never mind that, Beryl. Is Brown any better? Well, his temperature's gone down a bit, but he's still so weak. Has the doctor been again? He's coming later. Well, let me know what he says when he has been. But where can I get you, dear? Are you still there, Jim? Yes. Write it down. I'm sure you'll find it. I've got a big one there somewhere. Morning, Mr. Tatum. Morning, Mr. Madison. You keeping all right? Well, I can't grumble. That's right. Betty keeping all right? She's all right. That's right. The usual two ounces of digger, eh? Top. Oh, and uh, uh, that pipe there in the window. You know, the one with the head of Queen Victoria. Could I have a look at it? The Meersham. Ah, uh, everybody admires that. <coughs> that is, people who know a good thing when they see it. Now, that's real craftsmanship. Look at the delicate finish of that, eh? There's only one other pipe like that in the world, and I sold that to the station master's wife. She'd give it to him as a Christmas present. I know. I've seen him smacking it. They don't make pipes like this nowadays. 
I think I'll put it back if you don't mind. I really don't like people handling. Off a tick, now, off a tick. How much do you want for it? I've had my eye on it for some time, you know. Yes, yeah, so lots of people. I'd like one of my regular customers to have it, but I can't reduce the price. It's five pound ten, you know. Five pound ten, eh? Yes. Well, I don't call that out of the way, Mr. Tatum. Mr. Madison, what have you been up to? Want a bit of money on the dogs? Uh, never mind that. After all, I'm just as entitled to a pipe like this as the station master is. Certainly. Oh, no. Why, you might be the station master yourself in all his glory with that in your mouth. Oh, do you think so? Why not? <laughs> I'll let you know about it, Mr. Tate. Well, you didn't ought to be putting it in your mouth if you're not going to buy it. It's not hygienic. Who's that? Hmm? Bert Mallison works in the signal box. It makes him a bit balmy, if you ask me, stuck up there alone all night on duty. Well, you'll find one, then. Signal box? Which signal box? Down at the harbour. Well, you can see it from here. Ah, that's a good, strong-looking hook. I knew you found what you wanted, if you had a good look round. Betty. Here, Betty. What is it, Dad? You never told me you had to scrub the shop out. Oh, should not have Mr. Frostle here? Oh, I can't help it if he does. Yes, what is it, Betty? Yeah. Nothing, Mrs. Frost. Here, Miss Betty. You've not been uh, talking to anyone about that suitcase I found, have you? No, why? What's the idea, me calling on you in the shop? He's my father, Mrs. Frost. I don't care who he is. I don't pay you to stand around gossiping. Now, get on with that floor, do. Now, look here, Mrs. Frost. I'm having no daughter of mine doing work like that, see? What's going on here? Oh, can somebody serve me, please? I'm in a hurry. Now, you keep out of this, Joe. The man's drunk. Do you mind getting out of this shop? Or shall I call the police? Yeah, Betty, you go and get your hat and coat. We're going. I told you to get on with your work. I said, get your hat and coat, sweetheart. We're going. Did you hear my missus tell you to get out? Don't be too long. Because I'm waiting. Please, can somebody serve me? You can't keep people waiting here like this. If you don't like it, you can go somewhere else. I don't see why we should suffer. That's right. I've got to get home and get the children's dinner, not stand waiting here. I'm ready, Dad. Take your time, Beth. Take your time. Don't you worry. Oh, let's go, Dad. I'd like to see what you've got in that bag of yours. The last girl I gave notice no, no, to no, had no, gone. No, no, it's no good upsetting yourself. I'll see to it that no one else gives you a job round here. Never did you want to do that for, Dad. Well, I'm having no doctor of mine treated like dirt, see? Here. Betty, do you know what you and I are going to do today? What's that? We're going to enjoy ourselves. See? <laughs> Well, what did the good lady promise you? Handsome husband and a thousand a year? She said I was going to have a bright future and all that. I only hope it comes true. It will, my dear. Don't yeah, you no, worry, no, it will. There's no waiting. Take your tickets for the ghost
gentlemen, you are now about to witness the most sensational scientific display ever presented to the public. Camellia, the only living mermaid who has enough atomic energy in the lobes of her ears to flatten London if she allowed it to be harnessed. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the disappearing mermaid, Camellia. <laughs> As a little baby, I was found upon the seashore. They think that perhaps I've come out of the sea because I could swim like a fish long before I could walk. That is why I am called Camellia the Mermaid. My adopted father was a Russian prince who escaped from the revolution. My adopted mother was a French actress, very famous. When the war came, I escaped from the Germans to this beautiful country. And I offer my services to a professor of the Royal College of Science. Day and night, the professor experimented with me behind locked doors. After six months of hard work, he discovers the amount of atomic energy in the female figure is much more highly concentrated than in the male. What you will now be privileged to see is the result of jealously guarded secrets entrusted to me by the leading atom bomb scientists of the United States and Great Britain. <laughs> If two gentlemen will kindly step upon the stage, they will have the privilege of handcuffing Mademoiselle Camellia. Now, come along, gentlemen, come along. Don't be bashful. How about you, sir? Come along, sir, the wife won't mind. <laughs> ah, here's a gentleman who's keenly interested in science. <clears throat> That's right, sir, this way. Now then, one more gentleman. Come along, gentlemen, come along. We don't want to give Mademoiselle Camellia a bad impression. Here. You down there in the shilling, sir. What's up with you? The young lady won't mind, will you, miss? No. That's right. You've got the reputation of the town to keep up, hasn't he, miss? Oh, all right. Good. Ah, then, sir, perhaps you'd like to test these chains and pass along to the other side of the stage. Thank you so much. Now then, sir, allow me to help you, will you? Thank oh. you. Mind the step, sir. Now then, perhaps you'd like to test these chains, sir. <laughs> Ah, you see, ladies and gentlemen, a strong man. Okay, sir? Nothing phony about those? No. Now, would you like to chain the lady's wrists, sir? And you, ladies' ankles. Ah, I knew that was what he was waiting for. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we shall require two more volunteers from the audience. Come along, gentlemen, come along. Don't be shy. Ah, thank you, sir. Would you mind coming up on the stage, sir? Now, will you take your position there, sir? And you, sir? Here, sir. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, Camellia, the atomic mermaid, is now chained hand and foot and is utterly unable to move. The gentleman will raise her and place her in the biggest glass tank filled with real water ever presented to the public. Now, gentlemen, don't be afraid of hurting her. Now, up we go. Ha -ha! Mind assisting me with the lid, sir? <sighs> Thank you. Excuse me, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mademoiselle Camellia will break the chains by releasing the atomic energy in her kneecaps and escape from the tank by deatomizing herself. Hold tight, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Be careful, or the vibrations of the electrons will affect your eardrums. <laughs> Aha! And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mademoiselle Camellia has kindly consented to reward one of the gentlemen who assisted her in the true French manner. <coughs> Not you, chum, you've had it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Here, where's my hat? Oh, I'm sorry, I must have left it on the seat. I'll get it. That's all right, dear, I'll go. You want to keep a bit of glamour, love, in our profession. People don't want to spend six minutes to see you in here if they can see in the Lord Nelson for nothing. That's not my face they pay to see. If I want to go, I go. Here, you stay here, I say. Where do you think you're going to? Now, here, you take your hands off or you can't treat a lady like that. I'll teach you to interfere. You go no. off me. No, Dad, don't get excited. You know it's bad for you. Here, me. you get out of here. Get out. It's all right, it's all right. I wasn't going to say anyway. Oh, come on, Daddy. No, oh, don't you shut up. Don't shut up. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Slater. Hello, Bertie. Hello. What are you doing here, Bert? It's much too early for you. Well, I just came in to collect the old pay packet. What's the hurry for your wages, Bert? Well, me and Bert have been shopping and I ran a bit short. And I thought I'd pop over to the Lord Nelson and have one. What is it, your birthday, Bertie? I wonder why you two was both dressed up. Well, come on, Bet. I'll see enough of this place tonight. Yes, bye-bye, Mr. Slater. Goodbye, buddy. So long, Fred. So long, mate. Have one with me while you're there. Okay. Hello. Ta-da. Come along, Betty. Well, can't I come in tonight, Dad? Now, you know they're not allowed to serve you under 18. I'm looking quite grown up in my new hat. No one would know. Well, now, look, you stop here and I'll bring you out a glass of lemonade, you see? Recognized me. Well, of course I did. And I thought you was with a friend. I have no friends. Well, uh, perhaps you should have a drink with me, will you? Thank you. Same again, miss. Yes, please. Why did you do that? What, buy you a drink? No, stand up for me, I mean. Well, I just didn't like the way he treated you, that's all. That's all. I like that. Four and six, please. Oh. A votre santé, monsieur. Hey? A votre santé. That means to your good health. No, what does it? Yeah, votre santé. Here, yeah, what is that stuff? Verneau. We drink it in France. You like your taste? <laughs> yeah, thanks. It, it smells like cough mixture, doesn't it? Do you really like it? <laughs> well, I don't know. It reminds me of home. This lady? Oh, yes, of course. You like the show? Oh, it was ever so nice, thank you. Look, Bet, uh, there's your lemonade, dear. And you go and sit over at that table while I'm over this lady another drink, see? Yes, all right. 
She's very charming. It's my daughter. Your daughter? Oh, I thought she was your girlfriend. What, a kid of that age? Oh, you're not so old. Well, I was married 20 years ago. And your wife? Well, I've been alone for the last three years. I mean, me and Beth, that is. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what it is to be alone. Was your father really a Russian prince? Oh, you believe that stuff? Oh, fine princess I would make. Well, why not? Oh, you're very sweet. No, my father was a fisherman. The German came, they shot him. Mother and I took to the road. He bombed us. We got separated. It was horrible. How did you get over to this country? Somebody took me. A sailor. Well, anything was better than to stay there. Anything. He was good to me at first. Men always are, at first. You know, you didn't ought to talk like that. No, it's true, isn't it? What about some men? Yes, but not all. I've never met one who wasn't. What happened to your mum? Did you ever hear from her? Yes. She lives. Well, why don't you go back to her? She's so strict, she wouldn't understand. But why not? I understand. Why shouldn't she? You really believe that? Of course. Perhaps you're right. Come on, let's go and join Ben, shall we? What do you call her? Bet? Yes, it's uh, short for Betty. You all right, Beth? Yes, thank you, Dad. Don't you catch cold being put in that tank every day? Oh, my dear, I'm used to it. <sighs> Betty, how smart you are. What a charming frog. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I only got it today. My coat and my hat are new, too. Dad bought them for me. You're a lucky girl. Well, that dress needs something. Oh, I think you have the very thing for it. A little brooch. It'll make all the difference. I will give it to you. Oh, thank you. Is it true that French dresses are much smarter than English ones? My dear, it's all the way you wear them. Now, look at your hat. We ought to be going. Oh, need we, Dad? I don't argue a bit. Excuse me. I hope we'll meet again. Well, so do I, my dear. And if we do, I won't forget the brooch. <laughs> Will you come to tea one day? We live at 15 Adelaide Street. Uh, oh, I don't mean because of the brooch, but... Oh. Well, I must go. Bye. Good night, dear. That man a friend of yours? What man? Who just left you? Mind your own business. I must know. What did he tell you? Nothing. What do you know about him? You came to the wrong address. I don't even know his name. He's a signalman, name of Madison. Signalman? Oh, but he spends a lot of money. Oh, you must be mistaken. Maybe I was. Run away like that, Dad? I didn't run away. Just someone I didn't want to meet, that's all. Someone you'd had a row with? That's right. That's you not standing up to him, Dad. You always like to have it out with people. Yes, I do, don't have it. But I, uh, I think I'll just go up and have a lie down before going to work. Dad, when I was waiting outside the pub, a man kept staring at me. Funny looking chap in a mat, wasn't him, was it? Well, I expect it was just someone who'd had a bit too much to drink, that's all, Bet. Yes, that's what I thought it was. I'll put the kettle on. You have a cup. I don't feel like one at the moment.
Good evening. Excuse me, are there any messages for me? No, there are no messages, sir. Your friend's here, though. Hello. How are you, Brown? Oh, it's nice to see you again after all this time. Can two gentlemen be in for dinner? Later on. Thanks. Uh, we have a few things to discuss first. We can talk better in my room. Then we shan't be disturbed. You're not looking well, my friend. Uh, your native air doesn't agree with you, perhaps. Oh, by the way, you do remember me, don't you? Dupre, Inspector Dupre of the Prefecture of the Police. A great deal of water has passed under a lot of bridges since I saw you last. I have retired, you know. I am working now only in a private capacity. Please, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Good. Oh, by the way, you met your good friend Teddy, I suppose. Hmm? I understand that he was here to meet you on the day that you arrived. Teddy, now I finish with him. Ah, well, that's good news indeed. Yeah, I'm glad he has nothing to do with this little matter we are discussing now. You know, I had the devil of a job preventing old Pontro from coming over with me. Let's put our cards on the table, Brown. You know old Pontro as well as I do, considering he gave you your first job as an acrobat back in 1926, when he had the Casino de Montmartre. You worked for him several times since then, and it was on the stage of the casino that you had your accident and had to give up stage work, wasn't it? Yes. You know, of course, that Pontro sold the casino to an English syndicate last Saturday. Probably you know, too, that the buyers made a payment on account of 5,000 pounds in notes. That was one of the old man's fads. And say, be a good fellow, pay attention to me. Up to 8 o'clock that evening, the 5,000 pounds was in the safe in Pontro's office. During the evening performance, Pontro left his office and spent exactly 20 minutes watching the show. When he returned, the safe was empty. No one had come up or downstairs. The man on duty below was positive about it. The only way by which anyone could have got into the office was by way of the window. He would have to climb along the wall from the window to the bar. Something of an acrobatic feat, in fact. I personally know of only a few men who could bring it off. I learned later that my old friend, Brown, had been seen having a drink in the bar. I want a drink. I'm feeling dry. Pontro has sent me here to deliver a message to you. What message? He told me he had no wish to send the thief to jail, but was determined to get back his money. Or anyhow, the bulk of it. The bulk of it. Do you understand? Who gave you my address here? Well, I said to Pontro, unlucky Jim's not such a bad fellow at heart. He would not hurt a fly if I can see him at his little apartment at Paris with his nice little wife and the two children. I'll soon be able to fix things up. You've been to my flat? Why did you do that? I had a cup of tea with your wife. We had a chat. What did you tell her? You know, it is not fair the way you have treated your poor little wife. She told me you had come to England on business. I said, what did you tell her? Oh, I think it would be better if she told you that herself. Mrs. Brown! Oh, Jim. I'm sorry about this, Bill. It's no good going over it now, Jim. You are going to do what Mr. Dupre said. You are, aren't you, Jim? What do you mean, blabbing to my wife? Stick to your own job and don't go interfering. Don't, don't. It's better for me to know, much better. I thought it was funny sometimes. You never told me much about your business, but I never thought it was this. I never thought it was this. Well, now, Brown, you see the state you've got your little lady into? There's a chance of your lifetime to go straight. You are as safe as houses. I shouldn't give you away. And 500 English pounds in the bank, you can start a shop or a small business. Good heavens, my friend, it's a chance in a million. 
I'm sure he'll accept Mr. Pontro's offer. Oh, Jim, dear. Just think what he'll mean. And I promise, dear, if we can start afresh now, I won't always be bringing up what's happened. I won't ever refer to it again. I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't, Belle. I've got to have time. There's something I must settle first. Well, you'll be a good boy. You'd hand it over now. It's no use you playing for time. I'm sure he wasn't thinking that, were you, Jim? He would never have started this life. I know he wouldn't. He hadn't always been unlucky. And everybody against him. All right, all right, Bill. Better come to my room and I'll hand it over to you. That's the spirit. Unlucky Jim won't suit you anymore. We should rather call you Lucky Jim. Well, what does the advertisement say of this English dish you have for breakfast? Uh, uh, high over the fence, uh, lips, uh, sunny Jim. Force is the food that raises it. <laughs> Better log up tonight. You frightened of that man? What man? The one you said you'd quarreled with. No, I wasn't thinking about him in particular. Good night, Betty. Good night, Dad. God bless you. And another thing, I've had about enough of you lazing around here, letting Ethel do all the work, waiting on your hand and foot. <laughs> Who do you think you are, Lady Muck? Lady Muck. Oh, she. Oh, stop it. Oh, come on with that water, dear. I'm waiting for you. Oh, I've just about had enough of it. I don't mind telling you. No, more to the front, dear. I'm not getting any on the front. I could pick any girl from the streets and make a better mermaid out of her than her. the good of all these French programs to us. There, we've missed it, Ma, now. Oh, do quit grumbling, George. Oh, I don't listen. What he says, it's off a duck's back. You're dead right, off a duck's back. I wonder she doesn't go up to the West End to earn her living. Too bone lazy to do a decent job of work. I don't listen to these insults. I go. I don't stay in this dog's house. Here, not so much of the dog's house, thank you very much. It isn't to you I speak, madame. It's to this... This book. My people would be horrified if they could see me here. Lady Muck, you see. I've had about enough of you and of your wonderful people. It's a pity you can't go back to them. Oh, yes, why don't you take it over? I go at once to the next book when I have some money. What are you going to do now? Go out and make some? Huh. Now, George, manners, please. Ah. Never mind what I do. Maybe you have better friends than you think. Oh, have you? Then perhaps you can pay me the 30 quid you owe me. I owe you nothing. You owe me for every rag you have on your back. When I took you in, you had one dress and an old Mac. And I had to teach you your job and keep you. Well, for six months I worked for you. I don't believe it isn't pay now. Don't you get it into your head that you can run off without paying your debts. I'll fetch us back a bottle of Guinness, will you, dear? 
Wow. If you're not back in time Mark, for the next performance, I'll send the police on you. Question. Oh, shut up. Sound. I don't mean you any harm, but if you try to make a fuss, I shall do something about it. It's up to you. What do you want? A suitcase, that's all. Just an old suitcase without any handle to it. It's mine, and I want it. Where is it? I don't know. You tell me where your father's put it all on. He's got a suitcase like that. Hasn't he? I'll take a look myself. Let me come with you. Where does your dad find his valuables? He hasn't got any. Now, look, I don't like hurting little girls, but sometimes it's got to be done. What's in there? Nothing, only old clothes and things. Only old clothes and things, eh? Not an old suitcase by any chance. No! You're lying. And stay there. Keep quiet. seemed to look right through you. Oh, that's right. He was outside the pub. How'd you know? Funny why a burglar should want to come here. Oh, he wasn't an ordinary burglar. He was looking for a suitcase. A suitcase? Yes. Oh, I, I can't tell you. Don't you trust me? Oh, of course I do. You've just saved my life, but it's... For what? Will you keep it a secret if I tell you? Yes, of course. Dad found a suitcase yesterday in the street, and he brought it home here. There must be something very precious in it. I don't know. You've been alone here and haven't looked? Oh, what a girl. Oh, Dad said to leave it alone. Where did he put it? In the cupboard under the stairs. Come on, let's have a look at it. Oh, we mustn't. Dad would be ever so angry. We need not tell him. Where is it? Over there in the corner. No, it isn't. But I saw Dad put it there. But it's not here now. Oh, I'm so glad. Dad must have taken it to the police after all. Oh, he has hidden it where it's safer.
Why don't I have it out with him? Look here. I won't say nothing if you split the cash with me. Okay? No. What do I think I am? A crook? He's come to do me in. Oh dear, get out of it, can't you? Or I must talk to you. This is railway property and you get off it. No one? Well, what's up? We're looking for a fellow. Name of Brown. He's... That's him. I found him. about anything new. You think he will not like to find me here? Oh, no, but I want to tell him first. You won't come out, will you? Oh, that's a bit. Here. What's up? Is anything wrong? Look, that lady came here last night. What lady? The mermaid. She's in the parlour. I wish I hadn't left you alone. Dad, you have given it to the police, haven't you? Now, don't you worry about that suitcase. That's my deal. Hello. Good morning. Morning, miss. I, uh, I must thank you for looking after our bet last night. Oh, that's nothing. I have like breakfast for you in here. Oh, that is nice of you. I'll get it out of the oven. We have the fire burning. It's very cozy. We haven't used this room since last Christmas. Oh, that's my mum. Oh, she's very charming. And that's uh, Betty's mum. That's little Bet when she was six months old. Where's Betty's first communion? The what? The photo of Betty in your white dress and veil. I'm sure she was looking very sweet. Oh, uh, we don't have anything like that in this country. No? Oh, what a pity. In England, you have no feasts, no days for saints. Well, uh, we have Guy Fawkes Day on the 5th of November. Oh. Of England, I know nothing. Oh, it's so nice here. At us, we were having it like this. What, uh, at your home? Yes, my home. You don't know what it means to be in a real home. Not until you've lost it. It can't be much of a life for you living in that there caravan. Much of a life? <laughs> it's like living with pigs. Here. What made you come here last night? Well, I brought the sheet of brooch. Oh, I see. I see, I see. That's what you English always say when you do not see. To tell you the truth, it was... Not only the brooch. I couldn't stand these horrible people any longer. I had no place to go. So I came to you. Won't be a minute, Dad. All right, Bet. So 
That poor little child was terrible frightened when I arrived last night. You will go to the police about this man after breakfast, eh? Well, there's plenty of time. He, he's probably miles away by now. I think I'll uh, go and help Beck with the breakfast. It's all right, I'll take it. Oh. What's this? Omelette, ham omelette. Mademoiselle Camille. Please call me Marie. Camille is only the name I use in the show. Marie showed me how to beat up the eggs in a basin, warmed first so they come up all fluffy. Cool. French cookery, eh? <laughs> oh, it's prime. <laughs> she showed me another dish, too. Choux à long grosse. Ever so cheap, and you cook it in sour milk, what we'd throw away in England. Oh, but it must be red choux. What, a red choux cooked in sour milk? <laughs> <laughs> no, it means cabbage. Choux à la hongroise. Oh, but that's not enough for your dinner. What would you like with a big piece? I should cook dinner, if you permit. Well, I don't know. If I want to give Dad a real treat, I'll go down to the beach crabbing. Crab? That's a wonderful good market. One gets a dinner for nothing like that. It's a lovely day for it. Look. Well, then let's go. Both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, you're not uh, dressed for crabbing. You'll spoil those things. Oh, perhaps you have something old you could lend me. Of course, I'll find you something. Look here, you don't want to go and get wet and all mucked up. Oh, I'm used to getting wet. It's my job. Will these be all right? Oh, lovely, my dear. Just the thing. I'll go and change. I'll bring you up a pair of rubber boots in a minute. Oh, it's all right, Pet. I'll take them. I was going upstairs anyway. Have you finished breakfast? Yes, thank you, dear. I've had all I wanted. Again. Give me the boots. You behave like this with Bessie downstairs. It's all right. I'm not going to touch you. I, uh, I just wanted to ask you something, that's all. Well, what is it? Why don't you give up that job at the fair? After all, you ought to do something better than that. Showing yourself off in front of a lot of men half naked. What else can I do? Well, I couldn't do it since mine and be nice. And I'm not even very clever at that. People I don't like. Well, you can cook. I mean, uh, some sort of vast keeping job. That's what I was thinking. No, thank you. I don't want to cook for strangers. I want to cook for my own people. For my own kitchen. Well, I don't see why you shouldn't. Of course, I can't leave the fair. Gauchel says I owe money. How much? Thirty pounds. Not much, perhaps. But too much for people like me. And you? Something might turn up. <laughs> Wait for the miracle, eh? Oh, well, I mustn't bother you with my worry. I will have a few hours holiday with Betty, and then back into my costume, and back to the tank and the chain. Murray. Yes? What is it? You uh... You like me a bit, don't you? You're nice and kind to me. I'm grateful for it. Well, uh, give us a kiss then, will you? Give us a kiss then. <laughs> You're funny. Maria, ready? Maria, you coming? I'm ready. You do look nice. Mind you don't fall in those boots. Oh, yes, 
Betty. Oh, Bet. Well, look here, Bet. Uh, I, uh, I don't want you to mention about that man breaking in last night. Neither of you. Okay, Dad. Well, don't worry. I keep my mouth shut. Well, there's uh, nothing to keep your mouth shut about, then. I just don't want it talked about. That's all. All right. Cheerio, Dad. Cheerio, Bet. And, uh, take care of yourself. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. But it isn't. At least not for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Marie. I didn't mean to make you sad. You're awfully homesick, aren't you? <laughs> Who cares if I am, Anna? Oh, come on, Betty. Let's be happy and catch some nice fat crabs and cook a lovely dinner for your dad. Yes? All right. But I must just go and get the basket out of Dad's shed. I won't be sick. Something moving. I thought it was an animal at first. Well, never mind about that. Where is he now? I locked him in. Well, you better give me the key. Oh, my dear, why do you look so worried? He's safe, eh? He can't get out until the police come to get him. Have you been to the police? Not yet. Oh, but if you like, I can go and tell them now. Oh, no, you will. If anyone goes to the police, I will. And there are too many people poking their noses into my business. Why do you speak to me like that? Are you frightened of the police? Is that it? I think I changed my clothes and go back to the fair. Here's your key. Wait a minute, Mary. I'm sorry I spoke like that. Shall I make a cup of tea, Dad? No. Uh, look here. You'd better go and get something for dinner, as you didn't get any crap. And don't you worry, Betty. I've got to fix everything straight away. Camelia. Marie, can I come in for a minute? Sorry I flared up like that just now. 
I said I was sorry. Well, I'm used to being treated like dirt by the Gauchos and by everybody. I didn't think you would start the same. Anyway, there's no time for arguing. I shall be late for the performance. Here. Yeah. What would you say if you never had to go to the fair again? I would say thank heavens. Well, I've fixed everything. I've seen Gauchon. And I've paid off your debt. You're free. Is it true? You're not pulling my leg. No, I'm not pulling your leg. Are you pleased? Oh, please. But I don't know whether I'm on my head or my feet. Oh, how can I thank you? Here. You mustn't do that to me. Miss Gauchon fears it. Well, he did cut up a bit rough when I told him. Told him what? Well, that uh, we, you and I, were going to be married. Oh, that's what you said. Well, I, I was looking ahead a bit, because I hadn't asked you then. But you said you wanted a little home of your own. And I'm offering it to you now. Well, why don't you say something? You know how I'm longing to see my mother. I thought I could go back to her. But you can go. For a visit. After we are married. If not this year, we'll certainly next spring or so. But you see, owing to all the expenses I've had lately, my savings are running a bit low just now. Was it out of your savings that you bought the outfit for Betty and paid Gaucho? Oh, yes. What did you think? Oh, I don't know. I thought you had a little, what do you call it, a little windfall. The suitcase. How did you know about that? Never mind how. I know there's something bad with the suitcase. Now, look here. I've warned you before, Marie, not to poke your nose into my business. You can't forbid my mouth to talk. Is that how you're going to treat me once we are married? I think you've done something wrong, and I don't want to be mixed with it. I've been a bit foolish, that's all. But I can soon put things right. You'll have to take my word for it. You don't even trust me enough to tell me what's happened, and I shall marry you? Now you can say nothing, huh? All right. I'll trust you. I'll show you how much I trust you. So I dashed out of the signal box and I dived in after him. And that's where I found the suitcase. Well, now, I've got no secret from you. Are you satisfied? How much is it? 5,000 quid. 5,000? Is it real money? Yes, that's real money. What are you going to do? I know I ought to have informed the police as soon as I found the money, but for once I didn't do the right thing. But don't think too badly of me, Mary. And I give you my solemn oath that before we're married, I'll have everything settled and wiped out. But if you give it back, they will put you in prison. Well, even if they do, it'll only be for a fortnight or so. That would be a nice beginning for my married life. Waiting for a criminal to come out of prison. Well, at least it'll be over and done with. And I could never be happy with this on my conscience. What about me? You show me this money. You let me have a beautiful dream. You take me to France. Take you to France? With this money in France, we're going to have a wonderful life. Oh, safe, all tranquille. But you want to lose your job. You want to go to prison. You want to make poor little Betty so miserable. Oh, you're cruel. Oh, don't take on like this, Mary. We'll think of somewhere around it, see? Oh, I implore you. In France, one can live. We can buy a nice house with a wonderful fishing boat for you with a motor. And for me, the kitchen and the menage. We could find Betty a good husband and get her a nice, handsome dory. Everybody would envy and respect us. But what good would that do if we couldn't respect ourselves? But if we make fools of ourselves, then we can respect us. 
What happens to this money if you give it back? To what people is it? To some bank, perhaps. To some rich old businessman who doesn't need it. Are they better than Betty or I or my starving mother? Well, these people who don't know at all. Listen, Mary. Don't come near me. Listen, say I did agree. How are we going to get to France? You leave that to me. First, we hide the money again. I think I take a note to go on. Okay, wait a minute. You put that back. I'll give you five pounds out of my savings. Once we start to touch that... Oh, dear, what are you talking about? You agreed we keep the money, didn't you? Well, not definitely. Oh, yes, you did. You want me to be happy, don't you? Yes. Well, you should do what I tell you and everything will be all right. Mary. Can you get through to the police up there? Oh, what is it? Somebody drowned himself? Looks like someone's done him in. His head's bashed in. All right, I'll lay the information. Hello? Thatcher speaking, sir. They just fished a corpse out, sir, under the window here. starved to death in that shed. Oh, why do you worry about this man? He's a criminal. Yes, but he, he's a human being like we are. He didn't really mean to do that man in. He, he was just trying to defend himself, that's all. You must put that right out of your head. Right out of your head, see? He wouldn't take any risk to save you. Now, you listen to me. This is what we do. We take one of these day trips across the channel, and once we're there, we disappear. And Keep quiet for a bit. You agree to this? Whatever happens? Yes, Mary. Sorry to disturb you, Mr. Mallinson, but the Chief wants a word with you. Oh, what about? I guess it's about this corpse they fished out, near your signal box. A corpse? I'll be down straight away. Right. There you are. The sooner we get away with the money, the better. What, you mean I oughtn't to go to the police? Oh, don't be silly. Of course you go. The only thing you have to watch is your tongue. In the meantime, I prepare everything, and in the morning, we start. You trust me, that's all. All right. All right, Mary. You recognize him? I've never seen him, sir. Does that face mean anything to you? Yes, sir. You're quite certain about that? Yes, sir. On the night of the 18th, during the course of your night shift, were you quite certain you didn't hear any noises indicative of a fight or quarrel? Well, you see, sir, there's always a bit of a din going on outside the box. Train shunting, engine whistles and that. Oh, yes, and I remember now, there was an heavy wind blowing that night. So if there had been anything unusual, well, I wouldn't have had a chance to hear it, would I, sir? Well, that sounds reasonable enough. I would like to see the signal box for myself. Would you have any objection? Oh, no. Bates, ring up the station master, tell him Inspector Dupre will be coming along... No, no. Ex Inspector. I'm oh, sorry. Just say, Monsieur Dupre has my full permission to examine the harbour station signal box. Yes, sir. Send the next one in. Well, uh, do you want me any more, sir? That'll be all for the moment. All right, sir. And thank you, sir. Thanks for taking over, Bert. You're a real pal, mate. Okay. Uh, cheerio. Ta da.
I, uh, I want to introduce the Mrs. Uh, Mademoiselle Camellia. My wife, Mary. This is Mary Madison. How lucky he is, this rich English man, to have such a beautiful wife. What lovely clothes he gives her. And his daughter, Betty. What a lucky girl. Funny old Bert running off like that. Who'd have thought old Bert would turn out to be a thief? He's in the shed, Dad. He's there in the shed. He'll starve. He'll starve. have a nice easy job here, hmm? No wonder you're not interested in the world outside when you're so warm and snug. You gave me quite a start. <laughs> Don't disturb yourself. I only want to, to look around. Oh, carry on, sir. You must be very keen on your job, hmm? I understood that you didn't start your shift for some time. Well, you see, my mate, he was taken sick and he asked for me to take over for him. Oh, you're a kind-hearted man. Well, he'd have done the same for me if I'd felt seedy. I'm surprised to find you can see so little from your vantage point up here. In fact, you can see nothing at all. Surely, in the course of your job, it is necessary to see trains come and go. How do you manage? Well, uh, I'd rub the glass clear like you did then, sir. Yes, but of course. How stupid of me. It's hot in here. You don't mind if I let in a little air? Would you like a soap? <laughs> no, thank you. Well, uh, have you found the man what done it yet? The murderer? Yes. Well, that is for the English police. My job is to get the money back. What, so there's been some money stolen? Right? Five thousand pounds. You know, it's a bit chilly in here. We don't generally have these windows open until the uh, warm weather. I'm surprised you are not more curious. You can see so much from here. And you see, they have no idea they are observed. I should find it most delightful to see and not be seen. Well, it, it's no interest to me spying on courting couples. Oh, my friend, love is not the only thing you might observe from these windows. There are other passions of equal, if not greater, interest. Hunger, cupidity, if you had been less content with your warm stone Thursday night, if you had been less frightened by the draft, you might even have had the thrill of witnessing a murder. Well, that bloke, he couldn't have been down in under that window there, or I'd have heard something. But you told the CID inspector there was too much noise here. The wind and the train shunting. Well, you uh, get a few minutes sometimes when it's quiet. And it would just depend whether the fight took place during one of those quiet spells now, wouldn't it? Perhaps you're lucky not to have witnessed the murder. After all, poor Brown might have looked up and come in here and done for you too. But knowing the sort of fellow he is, I think it more likely he would bribe you to keep your mouth shut with some of that 5,000 pounds. Now look here, if you're insinuating... I'm that... insinuating nothing. Perhaps I'm merely letting my friend's imagination run away with me. I have nothing against you, my friend. I know nothing about you. But I can exclude no possibilities. And what I suggest is a possibility. That's all. And go on with your nap, please. And uh, if any recollection of some incident uh, should come back to you, you know, something that might have slipped your memory, you might let me know. I'm at the Bedford Hotel. Don't forget, will you? Monsieur Dupre, the Bedford Hotel. Madison here, sir. I'll have to go home. My little girl's been taken ill. Sorry. Can you hang on for another hour? Well, no, I, I ought to go now, sir. She's pretty bad. All right, then. Send my over right away. Thank you very much, sir.
Brown. You there? Mr. Brown. I've come here to help you. You know, what you need is some grub. I brought you some... some sandwiches from here. Well, you can see them if you don't believe me. Look here. It's no use you shamming dead. Because if you'd done a bunk, I'd have found the lock smashed. Well, there's the grub. And I... Brought you a few nips of rum. I'll go now and I'll bring you some more grub in the morning. Answer me, can't you? I can't stand here all night. Now look here. I'll give you till I count three. Do you hear me? Till I count three. One, two, three. Good. I didn't mean you. you know I didn't mean you any harm. Listen. I'll get you, Doctor. I'll give you back your money. I'll help you to get away. I didn't start it, you know I didn't. I was just getting you some grub, wasn't I? I knew it had been like this. I might have known. Must leave me alone now. Sorry, Mary. I want that. What's wrong with you? Where have you been? Give me back that note you took this morning. Now come on, give it to me. What's that on your hand? It's on your coat, too. Well, what have you done? It's all over. Our trip to France and all that. I've... I've 
I've killed him. You've killed him? Oh, you're mad. You're crazy. You've ruined everything. For, for you standing about for. We must get away from here at once. I must give this money back. Well, you can leave it behind. They'll come fight quick enough. Here. Here's the money I took. Now we haven't touched any of it. I'm sorry, Mary, but I must see this thing through on my head. Oh, but you can't. You've killed a man. They'll hang you. Don't you understand? They'll hang you. But he started it. He came at me first. And then I hit back. I had to. So it wasn't self-defense you killed him. I tell you what you do. You tell him you went to the shed to prepare for a fishing expedition. You didn't know this man was in the shed. You'd never seen him before. He attacked you. You defended yourself. When he was dead, you found he had hidden a suitcase in the boat. And you took it straight to the police. Oh, it's all so easy. Well, I don't want the easy way out. I'm going to tell him the truth. Well, why? Why put a rope around your neck? I must have the old thing settled for good and all. I must. You must. You won't. You always only think of you. What about me? What shall I do? What's to become of me? Listen, Mary. Don't touch me. Don't dare touch me with those hands. I don't want to have anything to do with the blood on your hands. I could have been so happy, but you had to go and destroy it all. Oh, what a fool you are. How I hate you. Do you hear me? I hate you and your big, ugly, clumsy hands. I've always hated them. Always. Always! Look up, said yourself, Billy. It's all over now. now come on. I'm taking you across to Reg and Mabel. I've... I've spoken to them. Now, come on, Billy. Yeah, Miss Sutherland. Thank you. Oh, and uh, hurry up a little bit. I don't want to keep Reg and Mabel waiting. Have you locked the back door, dear? Yes, Dad. Windows closed? Yes, Dad. Well, that's fine. Dad! <laughs> Dad! Now, oh, come on, now, dry your arms. Now, oh, look here. You don't want to let them see you being crying, do you? Come on now. There's a wretched baby. They look after. 